everyone. If you are new here, my name is Crystal, also known as the Book Gypsy, and today I'm going to be hauling some books for you. Uh, yeah, I have a lot of books to haul. <laughs> um, there will be an unhaul following up this video rather soon because I gotta get rid of some books because I got a nice stack over here. Some of them from publishers, some of them I purchased myself, and I want to show you guys because it's been a while since I did a book haul. So let's just get into it. The first two books that I have here are of the same title. I just have multiple copies because I absolutely love this book and I will get more into that with my wrap up at the, at the end of the month. But it is The Devouring Grey by Christine Lynn Herman. Now, this book was so good, better than I thought it was going to be. I haven't really been impressed by many YA fantasy books with magic and all of that because I feel like they've all just been kind of the same, but there's just something about a creepy woods scenario that really gets me. Uh, it got me with Saw Kill Girls and now along with this one, it's a little reminiscent of Saw Kill Girls, not as, um, not so much, but it definitely has that creepy woodsy vibe to it, and I loved it. I devoured this book. Now, this copy is the UK edition, the paperback edition, and I did not know it had hot pink sprayed edges. Now, both these covers are stunning, but I just, I absolutely, I absolutely love this one so much. I didn't read this copy because I got this copy after I read the book, um, but I would love to read this copy in the future because, oh my god, look at that. It's going to go in backwards on my shelves, I think. <laughs> and there's the spine. It's so different than the U.S. edition. This is the U.S. edition, and I love the cover on this one as well with all like the hidden little artifacts in the cover that has to do with the story. I just, I love it. I love this story so much. So if you read The Devouring Grey and enjoyed it just as much as I did, please let me know in the comments down below. The next book that I have over here on my stack on my bed because it's like way too high to put over here, um, is Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. Now, who am I kidding? When am I going to read this book? Uh, I'm having a hard enough time reading four books a month, let alone this is like four books. This is like four books in one book. It's a little, little excessive, but hopefully I get to it. But I don't think I'm going to be getting to this anytime soon. I've heard mixed things about it. I've heard not much happens until like halfway through the book, a little bit more than halfway through the book. And I just don't really want to invest my time in that right now so this might be more of a winter read for me in the near in the future probably like coming November or something like that and I'll just dedicate a whole month to Priory of the Orange Tree. The next book that I have here is The Near Witch by V.E. Schwab. I picked this up at Barnes & Noble obviously you can see that I gotta take the sticker off because it's really annoying but this cover is just so pretty sorry for the glare I love how it goes onto the spine and into the back. It's just so beautiful. Uh, the Near Witch was a book that Victoria Schwab published uh, years and years ago. It was one of her first books that she's ever put out, and it didn't really do so well. It kind of, you know, fell off the map and wasn't being printed anymore. And she re-released it, and now it's been on the bestseller list for quite some time. It's doing really well, so. Congratulations to Victoria on all of her successes. She is such an inspiration. I love her writing so, so much. Uh, and I'm just excited to get into that. I had found out about The Near Witch when I was like really diving into her works and I was looking for it everywhere and it was out of print. So I found like an ebook. I think it was like through Barnes and Noble, maybe it was like a dollar ninety nine. And I've had it on my nook. I've never read it, but I did download it like probably six years ago. Next couple of books I have here are books that I didn't own and I'm kind of shocked that I never owned these so I picked them up. I really love the new covers. Um, this is Stephen King's Under the Dome. This book is so cool. All these new covers that are coming out for Stephen King's books I'm really loving. Uh, I love the spines and they look really nice on the shelves because they all kind of go together I think. Who's the publisher? Gallery Books is 
putting these out. So this is really, really nice. Uh, it's a big floppy paperback, which I love. And it actually has like that rubbery feel to it, all the covers, which I really love. It's easy to hold and they don't get damaged as much as like regular paperbacks. So I really love these covers. So I have to buy all of them. So I've been slowly adding them to my collection. Uh, and check out this picture of Steven in the back. You can, if it'll focus. It's just, you know, chilling. Chilling. There's a, um, focus. There's a butcher at my shop, right? That looks just like him. And it's really freaky. Just, just wanted to put that out there. <laughs> The next Stephen King book that I picked up, and this is also a Peter Straub, and this is The Talisman, which I've heard great things about this story. Uh, this might be the next Stephen King book that I pick up because I've heard great things, and it's a fantasy, and it's about a kid, and I just, I like when Stephen writes from a child's perspective, kind of, like an it. I really enjoyed that, so I'm looking forward to getting to this book. I'm also looking forward to getting to Under the Dome because I've never read that one before either. Uh, and for some reason, the bigger the Stephen King book, the more I want to read it. I really enjoy his big books. <laughs> I really enjoy the lengthy books of his. Ooh, that sounds so bad. Um, but yeah. I just feel like his world building is really fun to read. Um, I, I am having a little trouble getting through Needful Things, though. I, I, I don't, I'm finding that it's not the book for me. I can't really get into the characters. They're kind of like, eh, and annoying. So Needful Things might be like one of my least favorite King books that I've ever read. Most likely. And the next Stephen King book I have is Firestarter. I've never read this one either, which is surprising. I am looking forward to getting to this. I did see the movie with Drew Barrymore, and it was good. I enjoyed it, but I want to know more about the story. Obviously, the book will tell a lot more. All of his books do. So I'm looking forward to getting into Firestarter as well. As you know, I run a Stephen King book club, but as of right now, I'm kind of putting it on hold because I haven't really had much time to put my work into it. I mean, I haven't much time been, I haven't really had much time to put my work into videos for booktube, let alone run a book club on my own. So I've been just kind of like posting stuff on there when I can, but it's very rare. So I'm so sorry about that. I'm hoping by like this summer I could start it up back again. But right now I'm so busy, like I'm changing jobs um, and all that. So like right now I just want to pick up what I want to read when I want to read it and not necessarily just read the group book. So that's just kind of where I'm at right now. I'm sure a lot of you guys can relate to that. Sometimes you, you get into things and then you just don't want to do them anymore. Unfortunately, it happens. We're all human. In. So I'm looking forward to reading Firestarter sometime this summer. I feel like this would be a really good summer read. And I want to read it before the Institute comes out because I feel like it has a lot to do with each other from what I've heard, I think. From the Losers Club podcast, I think they said that they correlate with each other a little bit. So I'm curious to see how that works. So I want to read Firestarter before the Institute comes out in, I think it's like September or October that that time you know next I have here something surprising for me and my channel but I want to start reading more of these books and it is the huntress by Kate Quinn and it has the deck of pages that I love I know a lot of people don't like them but I love them I feel like I'm reading like an archived book or something like something from like the 1700s or something um, I picked this up because it's historical fiction and I don't really read a lot of historical fiction on my channel and I want to get into that a little bit more because I do love history. Um, there is so many World War II novels out there so I'm gonna kind of limit myself with those because you could totally like OD on those. Uh, but I want to read more historical fiction uh, even with some magical elements to it uh, like A Discovery of Witches like that series I would love to get back into. Um, so yeah so I picked up the Huntress because I heard amazing things about this book. I heard it's great. It's a little bit thriller-esque um, and it happened, it takes place after World War II with like all of the stuff that's really happened and how people are living after the war and how it affected them. It's also following and 
basically an assassin woman who is now being chased she was the huntress and now she's being hunted so that's really what it's about from what I got from the synopsis and it sounds really intriguing especially for the time period because I really like the time period um, so it was I want to say it took place in started in Russia and then the huntress goes to Boston so We'll see what happens. I want to get to this rather soon. And the print for this, it's there's no hardcover for it, but they printed it like a hardcover in paperback, which I really love. So you get the inside flap and the deckled pages and everything. You know, it's not really small writing, which I really love. So I feel like this is just going to be an enjoyable book. And it's also by the author of the Alice Network. So if you enjoyed the Alice Network, I heard that you'll love this so much better than the Alice Network. So let me know if you did read the Alice Network and if you think I should read that. Um, but I'm going to get into this first before I even get into any more Kate Quinn books to see if I actually really like historical fiction like that. So... We'll see. Next up, I have A Curse So Dark and Lonely, and I got the UK cover because I'm trying to limit all the hardbacks that I have because they just take up so much space. So if I can get a paperback edition from Book Depository, then I do that. But A Curse So Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kemmerer is a very popular book on YouTube, uh, on BookTube right now. So you guys probably know the gist about what this is about. I'm currently reading it for my owls right now, and I'm enjoying it. It's a lot different than what I thought it was going to be for a retelling. Um, and it's, it started off like rather quickly, so I feel like I'm going to finish it rather quickly because it's very thrilling so far, and I just want to keep figuring out what's going on. The chapters are short, so that's exciting, so it helps you to flip the page. Um, so yeah, so I'm really curious to see how this ends. Uh, I'm really like not even like a quarter of a way through it yet. So I will let you guys know in my wrap up if I finish this, how far I got. Hopefully I finish it so I can complete my owls. Uh, and yeah, so I'm looking forward to this because I heard this is a very like diverse book. It's about a girl who has cere cerebral palsy, which is really interesting to see how she gets through like her day to day. Uh, the first coming like the first few chapters she discusses like she can't do certain things, she doesn't really have much strength to do it, so her brother does a lot of stuff for her. It's really interesting, um, but she seems like a really tough cookie, so that's what I really love about her so far. So I hope I continue to love her. I know like with retellings with uh, A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J Maas, um, I read it. I didn't really love it. It just got really annoying. Pharaoh was really obnoxious. So I hope A Curse So Dark and Lonely doesn't go down that path of like that romance. It was just so, so heavy on the romance. And I know this is a romance book, so it's going to be there and it's expected. But I was just like wanting to throw up with Feyre and Rysan like through that whole series. I just like it was just too much. So I hope this doesn't go that route. I just want to enjoy it. I don't want to be too overloaded on the romance front um, and disgusted by some things. Like in that series by Sarah J. Mass. I have here some books from publishers that I want to show you that I am so excited to read. Some of them I'm currently reading already because I just couldn't wait when I got them in the mail. But the first one is Small Town Hearts by Lily Vale. And this is from Swoon Reads. So thank you Swoon Reads for giving me this book. It's a finished hard copy edition. I was impressed with this book when I saw it because this is my favorite color of all time and this is the cover of the book on the inside. So it's beautiful. This book actually was released already. I want to say it came out in April or the end of March. I'm not exactly sure the exact date but it is in stores now. Uh, it is about a bisexual girl who just ended a relationship with a girl and she's kind of like starting to like not limit herself like she doesn't want to lim limit herself from dating girls or dating boys she doesn't want to label herself really she's like she wants to like what she likes so she lives in a small town she works at a diner and she just it's just her summer basically um, where her friends kind of are preparing to go away to college and she's not. She's kind of stuck in this small town. She's going to be working at this diner. Uh, it's up in Maine I want to say it takes place which I really love that part of the U.S. 
So that's why I wanted this book because I heard it's very atmospheric, small town, sleepy town. I love that about books. So I really wanted to read this and review it on my channel. So that will be coming up very soon for you guys. I'm sorry that my camera keeps going out of focus. I keep, I keep looking at the viewfinder. I don't know what's wrong with my lens, but it just won't focus. So let's see if I can do one of these or something. Having camera issues. So yeah, so I, I really am looking forward to reading it. I started it, I'm not done with it obviously, but it seems really good and I'm really loving how the representation is. Um, in some books it's just kind of like thrown in there, like just to make a statement like this character is bisexual. But like you could just tell by the way she speaks that she's bisexual and I like that. And I think more books should do that because I'm so sick and tired of reading and she was bisexual or and she was into girls. Like I feel like that's categorizing people and kind of limiting them a little bit and also just stereotyping just so like you get the point across like this character is gay. Okay, I know that. Like, I'd rather just read it and, like, you, it just, you know it. Like, you know it. You don't need to, like, be told blatantly in black and white that this person is whatever. So that kind of annoys me about some books. And one of the books that I read recently did that, especially towards the end. Like, you should have did that in the beginning of the book, if anything. Not, like, the last ten pages of the book and be like, and so-and-so is this. And, and you're like... Okay, well, what does this have to do with the story now? Like, because the story was great, but you just had to throw that representation in there just to say that you have it in there. And th that kind of has been annoying me about authors. I like how Lily Vale portrays her main character because you know it. Even though it's not blatantly said, she's not going to limit herself to dating guy or girl. And I really like that a lot. The books I have here are from Candlewick Press, and the first one is The Lost Coast by Amy Rose Capetta. Now, this book is highly anticipated for me. It is about a group of queer witches in the Redwood Woods of California, and basically someone goes missing, and it's just like a whole big, it's a whole thing. I started reading it already, and I'm loving the content so far. I'm loving the way that witches are represented in this book so far. So I can't wait to finish it and I'm going to read it more this weekend. So that's really exciting. I'm so thankful to Candlewick Press for gifting me this book. And it is a final hardback copy, which is so nice. So, so nice. And the book itself is blue. Another blue book. So I'll probably be walking around without the the cover on it anyway because I don't want it to get ruined. But I'm really excited and I have my book charm bookmark with all the crystals. This is from Lala's mom, Lala's mom's shop, book charm shop. I love it. Would you just focus? This camera is really bad today. There you go. It's so pretty. It's a crystal quartz, clear quartz. No negativity here. <laughs> so it's anything more fitting for bookmark. This is the best fitted bookmark for this book. So I'm excited to get into the Lost Coast and see the result. I've heard great things. A lot of people are really enjoying it. So I think I'm going to enjoy it too. And next up I have Star World. And this is by two authors, two very well-known authors, Audrey Colehurst and Paula Gardner. And this book is basically your you know, falling in love with the person that you least expect. So these two girls, they come from different parts of the spectrum in school. One is popular, one is not. And they kind of just join together and create this star world where it's for them to escape their everyday life. And they just create this world in their minds and basically you kind of, they kind of fall for each other and i want to see how this story plays out i don't think it's going to be that typical trope of falling in love with the person that you least expect i think there's going to be a little bit more to it um and i just love the cover these covers 
Man, they're doing a good job with these covers because if I store this in the store, I would pick it up, that's for sure. And this book has come out already. This came out April 16th. Oh, and The Lost Coast comes out May 14th. So make sure you pre-order your copy if this sounds like something that you're gonna enjoy. Make sure you pre-order it or go pick it up that day because I feel like this is gonna be a well-loved book for all of us here on BookTube. And finally, a long-awaited book that I am so happy that I got my hands on. And that is King's Bane dun, 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 by Claire Legrand. I am so excited to read this book. You have no idea. I've been like kind of reading pages here and there, but it's one of those, do you ever get like that fear when you get a book that you've been wanting to read for so long and you highly anticipate it and you finally have it in your hands and you're like, oh, I wanna read it, but I don't wanna read it. Oh, I want to, like, this is not the right time to read it. I want to read it. I want And then before you know it, it, like, kind of, you forget about it. <laughs> um, I've done that so many times. So I'm trying not to do that with this one because I really want to read this before it comes out. I want to read it before people start spoiling things for me. And, yeah. So I'm definitely going to finish reading this one this month. Hopefully along with The Lost Coast because those two books are, like, my favorite right now. So, yeah. So this is the second installment of the Imperium series by Claire Legrand. The first one was Furyborn, the second one is Kingsbane, and I'm not exactly sure what the third one is going to be called just yet, but from what I've heard from Claire, which I'm not going to give you guys much spoilers on the second book, if you haven't read the first one, I suggest you pick it, pick it up, especially if you like fantasy and feminist fantasy. It is amazing. So. Claire is very, very proud of the outcome of Kingsbane. She, this is like her baby. She's just so proud of it. So I am so proud to have a copy of it and read it for her and review it for her because she is also a New Jersey native and I will represent my Jersey girls. So thank you, thank you to Sourcebooks for letting me get an advanced copy of Kingsbane. I love it. It's gorgeous. And the cover is just like, there's something about these types of paperbacks that I just absolutely love. They're just floppy, that rubbery feel. It's just, it's so, so nice, so, so, so nice. So I have already pre-ordered my hard copy of this to go along with my hard copy of Furyborn. Um, so if you have not pre-ordered your copy of Kingsbane already, if you loved Furyborn, please pre-order it. It comes out May 21st. If you pre-order it through Amazon, it comes on your stoop that day. Like that's the best thing. Um, so. So yeah, that's what I did. I pre-ordered it through Amazon and the day of release, it's on your porch. So can't go wrong with that. And then you don't have to go to the store and get it. So that's pretty easy. Sorry for my out of focus video. Uh, I realized that my camera was on a setting that it shouldn't have been, but there's nothing that I can do about that now because I filmed it and I'm not refilming this video. I'm all over the place today. I'm sweating. It's hot in my house. I gotta turn my fan on. Um, and today is the second night of Passover, which my boyfriend's family celebrates Passover. So we are going to his grandma's house for the Seder. So I'm excited to see everybody. So on that note, that is it. That is my haul for you guys. This is my spring haul. Hopefully I get to all these books as soon as possible and hopefully I can unhaul some books this week and I will film a video for you guys because I am running out of room in my shelves, in my closet. I have like a shelving in my closet. I'll show you guys maybe one day, but my closet is like a huge mess right now. So yeah, I'm probably not going to show you guys that. Um, but I want to unhaul some books, some books that I've read already that I know I'm not going to reread and some books that I just never touched. So, and if you guys, um, know where I can donate arcs that I have that are, I'm not going to read, please, please let me know in the comments down below what you've done with your arcs. I don't want to just donate them to charity because I just don't think that's right to do. So unless people want them, I'll, I'll put them on my Instagram maybe and we could just swap them. So on that note. Um, yeah, I'll be talking to you guys soon. Bye!